In this video, we are going to talk about part four of vectors. So in the previous, in the previous videos, we talked about definition of vector. And we talked about vector additions and scalar vector multiplication. We also defined the transpose operator and the inner product. And in the previous slide, we talked about norm and distance. So now we are going to first talk about the angle between two vectors. The goal of this part is to understand the following concepts and see some examples. First, definition of the angle between two vectors. And second, special cases. All right. So given two non-zero vectors x and y, what does non-zero vector mean? It means a vector which at least one of its elements are non-zero. So if x is 0, 0, 0, this does not apply. Given non-zero vectors x and y, the angle between the two vectors is given by, so we show it by the symbol, the angle between vector x and vector y is arch cosine, x transpose y divided by Euclidean norm of x multiplied by Euclidean norm of y. All right, now let's look at some special examples. The first example is vector y is equal to 0, 1, and vector x is equal to 1, 0. So in this case, the angle between these two vectors is 90 degrees. So let's see. Angle between x and y is equal to arch cosine x transpose 1, 0 multiplied by y, 0, 1 divided by norm of x, which is 1, and norm of y, which is 1, which is arch cosine zero, which is equal to 90 degrees. So this was a special case of uh, two vectors that are perpendicular. All right, the next definition that we want to discuss in this lecture is dependence and independence. So the goal is to understand the definition of independent vectors and dependent vectors and also to see some examples of dependence. All right, uh, let's just start with the definition. Assume that we have a set of scalars, beta sub one, beta sub two, and beta sub n. And then we have a set of n dimensional vectors, a sub one, a sub two, and a sub n. So each of these are a vector. So, these vectors are linearly independent if the only solution to this equation is scalar beta one multiplied by vector a sub one vector plus uh, scalar beta sub n multiplied by vector a sub n is equal to zero. The only solution to this is equal to all of the scalar values should be zero. In this case, we call them linearly independent. If I want to simplify this, it means at least one of the vectors in the set can be created by adding all the other vectors, each multiplied by a specific scalar. So uh, this is basically writing this in wording. But then we want to see what are the scenarios. One scenario is where all of the beta i's are equal to zero. In this case, we call them linearly independent. And another case is where one of these betas are non-zero or one or more of these betas are non-zero, which means we can create one of the vectors as a combination of others. Let's call that vector a sub one. So we have beta one, a sub one. We bring all of them to the other side. One is beta two, a sub two. 
minus beta n a sub n and then you divide both sides by beta one. So as you can see, if betas are non-zero, it means a sub one can be created as a depends on the value of the rest of these vectors in this set. There is also another rule that I want to remind here. In a set of n-dimensional vectors, you can have at most n linearly independent vectors. So when we are in the 2D space, we, the maximum number of independent vectors is two. If we have more than two, the third vector can be created as a combination of these two. If we have n plus one vectors in the di n-dimensional space, one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. All right, let's take a look at the example of this specific case. It's called vector A to be one, zero, vector B to be zero, one, vector C to be two minus four. All right, so as you can see, vectors A and B are linearly independent. What does that mean? Beta one A plus beta B is equal to zero. This leads to beta one is equal to beta two equal to zero. However, vector C can be created by two multiplied by A plus minus four multiplied by B. So this is A, this is B. So what does that mean? That means a set of vectors A, B and C are linearly dependent. However, set a and B is a linearly independent set. All right. So some examples of linear dependence. Uh, the question here is consider vector X, vector X, which is one and two, and vector Y, which is three and six. All right, you want to know whether there exists a solution uh, where beta one X plus beta two Y is equal to zero and beta one is equal to beta two is equal to zero or not. So we have beta one multiplied by X plus beta two multiplied by Y equal to zero. This is a quite a clear example. So if you choose beta two to be one and beta one to be minus three, this happens. So you could find beta one non-zero, beta two non-zero, where beta one X plus beta two Y is equal to zero. So what does that mean? That means these vectors are linearly dependent. Another example that I want to solve here is example of three vectors. A1 equal to 201. A sub 2 is equal to 0 minus 4. 0. And A sub 3 is 2 minus 4, 1. So again, as we can see, A sub 1 and A sub 2 are linearly independent. What does that mean? It means if you want to find beta 1, a1 plus beta 2, A2 equal to zero. The only answer to this is beta 1 is equal to, beta 2 is equal to zero. However, if, this, if you take a closer look, if you have beta 1, A1 plus beta 2, A2 plus beta 3, A3 is equal to zero, then you can simply choose beta 1 is equal to Beta two is equal to minus one, and beta three is equal to one. What does that mean? A three is basically A one plus A two. So instead of vector A one, A two, and A three is linearly dependent. So these three vectors, A three is linearly independent on A one and A two. All right. 
So in the part uh, four of vectors, first we talked about the angle. between two non-zero vectors. So as we define the angle between vectors x and y is arc cosine x transpose y divided by Euclidean's Euclidean norm of x and Euclidean norm of y. Then we talked about linear independence and Dependence. For a given set of scalar values, beta 1, beta 2, beta n scalars, and a given set of vectors, a1, a2, and a sub n vectors, if the answer to beta 1, a1 plus beta 2, a2 plus beta n, xn equal to zero. If the answer to this is all of betas are zero, then we call them linearly independent. Otherwise, they are linearly dependent, which means at least one of the vectors could be created by a non-zero combination of the rest of the vectors. 